Well, good morning, or good afternoon as it is now. This is uh, Ian R. Crane. It's the afternoon of Saturday, the 4th of July, uh, 2020. And uh, this is my first live stream since my contribution to the AV11 conference uh, back in May. But my first standalone live stream um, uh, since September of last year. And uh, it's a totally different world. And uh, unfortunately, of course, I have been pretty much a victim of the, the lockdown, although it hasn't uh, prevented me from uh, doing a little bit of exercise to try and get some muscular strength back. But the world I venture out into is very different from the, the world I remember prior to the cancer hitting me back in February and of course forcing my hospitalization in um, in April and you know the, one of the great tragedies that has occurred in that time is of course the loss of David Noakes and Lynn Thayer to the French judicial system and despite the sterling efforts of many many people not least of course John Smith and his attempts to uh, use common law to prevent the extradition of David and secure the repatriation of Lynn Tyre. But in reality, the uh, British legal system decided that it had no possibility of beating John in the courts. So they simply ignored him and uh, rode roughshod over him. So David and Lynn are now in the same jail uh, back in the uh, south of Paris. And um, of course, AB11, uh, despite the fact that it wasn't possible to hold the event at Horwood House, I absolutely take my hat off to the AB team who pulled together a truly amazing uh, virtual event. And um, I, I had the luxury of watching it from my sofa because I was... Uh, uh, freed from the hospital regime a couple of days prior. And uh, I have to say that Brian Gerrish in particular um, and, you know, the team, they did an amazing job. And, uh, you know, I'm extremely grateful for that. And for those people who are contacting me seeking information about the DVDs, um, yeah, there's a lot of work that is going into uh, ensuring the, the quality of the, the DVDs from that event. But... Uh, um, reliably advise that they they will be available uh, shortly um so i'm going to talk a bit about the lockdown in a, in a while but uh, obviously uh, a lot of people um a lot of people are uh inquiring um about my health and uh unfortunately it's not all good news so after the surgery, which of course has uh, forced some very significant lifestyle changes, um, then uh, which I have you know, adjusted to and uh, thanks to my immediate family, um, you know, have uh, come through remarkably well. But uh, last week I was told that unfortunately um, uh, the scans and the biopsy taken during that surgery uh, uh, show that um, the cancer has returned and obviously the allopathic medical industry only has one recommendation and that is uh, radiotherapy and, and as I'm sure most of you if not all of you watching this will be well aware that's not something that I'm particularly interested in uh, pursuing not at this stage anyway um, there are options, and um, I was discussing these options with uh, Brian Gerrish uh, the back end of last week, and I received a, a truly wonderful letter uh, from Brian. And uh, I just want to uh, read part of this letter to you. I do understand, I'm not sure what's going on here with uh, the new um, YouTube live stream. I'm getting some comments that... Uh, People can't see me due to the um, live chat overriding my, my face. But uh, hey-ho, I'll have to have a look at that another time. 
But so this is a letter from Brian. Says, Dear Ian, this is a very short communication from me, which I very much hope you will be pleased to receive. And having read it, be pleased to say yes in reply. Just to be clear, the right answer for you is yes. You have to forgive me. Some of the drugs that I have to take have uh, suppressed my t testosterone. And so, unfortunately, emotion does kick in rather too quickly. No doubt with everything you, that has impacted on your health, time in hospital and recovery, and with the added present mad times of COVID-19, AB11 will seem like a very distant event. What hasn't faded away for us is the fact that this was yet another excellent alternative view that happened because you prompted a number of us to step up and help out whilst you were incapacitated for emergency operations for cancer. Not only did it work out as a fantastic live streamed event, it was greatly boosted by your personal appearance on camera just a day or so after leaving hospital still feeling the effects of some serious and extremely painful interventions by your medical team. You are certainly a real fighter. And it was also wonderful to hear, despite many problems in the NHS, your surgical team were professional, dedicated and caring. Uh, and I can't emphasise that enough. My, my surgical team were truly amazing. Excuse me. This isn't very professional, but uh, with the medication, there's not much I can do about it. I understand that you are still receiving and still recovering from that surgery. And whilst it was successful, you're still battling with some cancer, some residual cancer. I also know that you're very keen to keep your options open with regards to the type and timing of treatments, particularly with respect to alternative options not provided by the NHS. And these, of course, have a cost even when individuals are kind enough to offer them with donated time and expertise. Ian, I'm really delighted to say that I have recently been contacted by a number of your followers and supporters who are keen to help your recovery, however possible. In discussion, we realise that for you to have the best access to alternative options, you will need significant funding. We have therefore decided that we would like to set up a fundraiser to raise the money you will need for treatments of your choice. So Brian has yet again stepped up and offered to front the, the crowdfunding that I need to get the treatment. <laughs> The irony is, I don't feel this emotional. This just kicks in with the uh, the magnitude of the medication, and unfortunately, the painkillers that I have to take are enough to tranquilize a small horse. <laughs> I didn't expect to be sitting here now, <sighs> yet alone to have a ringside seat to everything that's unfolding in this crazy world. It's an alien world. You know, what is going on? The good news is that I know that more and more people are waking up to this madness. Even the conversations that I've had with paramedics who have transported me to and from hospital, it's very clear that not everybody buys into this crap, this bullshit. And, and I know that many, many people have suffered directly and indirectly as a result of this lockdown. It seems that for whatever reason, I was fortunate and actually benefited, as did obviously many others, from the fact that the hospitals weren't filled to capacity. Quite the opposite, they were empty. And uh, so consequently, the quality of surgical and nursing care that I received was absolutely first class. And I know that some of the people in the NHS are extremely frustrated 
by the restrictions placed on them in terms of the health care that they are able to provide. It's not their fault. It's the pharmaceutical industry and the respective nice committees, <laughs> what a crazy term that is, who restrict the medication that's available to people who succumb, have to succumb to treatment with the NHS. But I'm pleased to say that uh, I do have an opportunity. Um, a, a clinic has stepped up. And whilst they have offered a very significant discount on the cost of treatment, it's not cheap. And it's not in my immediate area either. So I have to in, uh, uh, cover the transport and accommodation. And um, I really don't like having to do this. I really don't like the way I feel right now. But I hope this treatment can help me fight this battle so that I can return to the fray and fight this bullshit that's being unfolded and unleashed upon humanity. And I thank everybody who has held me in their thoughts and their prayers, who has offered advice and guidance. And I, I know we'll continue to do so. And I know that within 24 hours, I'm going to want to take this YouTube video down. <laughs> so make the most of it. <laughs> And as the, when the crowdfunder manifests, please, if you feel able to contribute in some small way, it would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, the trolls will always be looking to uh, throw the knives. And I wouldn't wish what I've had to endure on my worst enemy. And uh, I hope to God that, you know, the medication that David and Lynn are in jail for having the audacity produce does find a way to eventually get to market. Of course, that treatment was denied to me. I certainly didn't share my knowledge of my cancers with David and Lynn because I didn't want that to become the issue. The issue was their freedom and getting GC Math into the public domain. And that's why I'm not going to give any more detail about the treatment that I'm looking to undertake, which hopefully will start within the next few days. So, look, for all of you who thought that this was your Independence Day, huh? it's not. The establishment is looking at this as simply a stage towards total lockdown, total control. And of course, the great irony is that Boris is offering three million Hong Kong citizens the opportunity to come to the UK because of China's suppression of their human rights. Well, frying pan to fire springs to mind because what's going on in the UK right now is pretty much identical. It's just less obvious to many uh, as to what is going on in China right now. So sadly, you know, the generation that comes, generations that come behind us, they may never know freedom in any way, shape or form. And their definition of freedom will be very, very different from our perception of freedom, certainly 20, 30, 40 years ago. So if I'm not able to carry on the fight, I'm gratified that watching online, there are an increasing number of people who are stepping up to the plate, sharing their insights, sharing their wisdom and encouraging people to resist this totalitarianism. And, and I would encourage you to support them in whatever way, shape or form you can, because everybody reaches out to a different audience. And every seed that is sown right now will come to fruition at some future date. 
So keep sharing those seeds. Keep spreading the word. Keep getting out on YouTube, even if you're only reaching a, a, a small number of people. Get the word out there. And, you know, when I look at the smug faces of the likes of Matt Hancock, it is enough to make anyone want to vomit. These people know what they're doing. Any suggestion that they don't know, you know, Matt Hancock suggesting that if people didn't conform, that he would consider locking down the beaches. That should tell you all you need to know. The UK column has been doing an absolutely outstanding job of providing data, providing scientific information, which effectively proves that everything that comes out of Boris's mouth, Matt Hancock's mouth, and the majority of their scientific advisors, although if you listen very carefully to what Chris Whitty has said over the course of the various broadcasts that he's participated in, he's basically let you know that this is a scam and that many, many deaths reported as COVID-19 related were in fact nothing at all to do with COVID and therefore falsifying the, uh, the data. So it's up to each and every one of us. And I promise that <laughs> I'm not going to broadcast until I can actually control the emotions a little bit better. But meanwhile, I encourage everyone, tune in to UK Colin at one o'clock on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Follow 21st Century Wire and every other alternative outlet. And do your own research. Come to your own determination and realisation of what's unfolding here. Because it's only happening because we, the collective we, allow it to happen. I can't venture very far at the moment. But I have every intention of AV 11 taking place and being a live event on Sunday the 1st of November and I very much hope that I will be able to participate in that event and AB12 I very much hope that that can be a live event from April sorry yes from April 30th Friday April 30th to Monday 3rd of May 2021 if it's not live events then sadly it will mean that the lockdown mentality has taken a hold. So let's keep doing whatever it is that we're doing to resist this madness. Thanks for sharing with me today. I know many of you are going to go out and enjoy your first pint. And I'm sure that's going to be one hell of an experience. And uh, if you think that I'm ever going to go into a pub having to fill in an app with my personal details... <laughs> Um, just so that uh, I can be fodder for the track and trace <laughs> capos. Then you've got another thing coming. But uh, we can break through this. Already there are many, many places in the world that are re resisting the totalitarian take. And as for Bill Gates, <laughs> well, he should be where David and Lynn are right now. And David and Lynn should be doing what they were doing a few years ago, which is helping people to fight from can uh, fight cancer and many other pernicious illnesses and uh, afflictions. So thanks so much for everything. And I hope to be back with you soon in a more controlled state. <laughs> Take care. Bye now.